let's just purchase off of eBay for $25.95 um, under the condition of for parts or not working. The description was that the tape deck did not work but the unit powered up. We should be able to check between the live and the neutral and turn the switch on. And we should be able to read the primary winding on the transformer. So the value has reduced to 420 ohms so that should be the resistance pretty much of the primary side of the transformer. So it looks like the switch is operating okay and the transformer winding is intact. So the next thing it will be to remove the case. Let's switch it on. Right and we've got two LEDs of lit on the main display. Um, for the left and the right channels. That's a good sign. Okay, we've removed our little uh, plastic shield over this board here. And what we've got is the supply coming in. On the top is the brown cable for the life and the blue for the neutral below. Um, we've got the white cable going off and tracing this around it goes to the switch and then back from the switch Back to this point here um, and that goes to another white cable which goes off on the primary side of the transformer so we have 244 volts approximately um, this is the AC waveform right so the next test I want to do is the um, switch the transformer on and measure the voltage on the secondary side we've got three connections here We've got um, a black which, and two reds. And I imagine the black is probably the center point, center tapping of the transformer winding. All right, I'm gonna go on the outer red and the black. Okay, and then switch the unit on. Right, and we're reading 11.5 volts RMS. Um, let's have a look at the wave on the scope. I'm going to measure to the other red one and see if that is, gives us the same voltage and the same waveform. So 11.5 volts as well. So it looks like both those windings are operational and that the black is the center point of the transformer. Secondary. And now on the two reds, I should get double single voltage, 23 volts. Okay. The multimeter is now set to DC range. Um, we've got 27.4, 27 and a half volts from the um, bridge rectifier, DC. Uh, the scope is showing the overall DC level. We've got 27.65 volts showing as the DC component and 0.62 volts um, AC ripple on top of that so it's fairly smooth okay so eject function which seems rather undone on like so eBay reported eBay seller reported that it doesn't drive and it certainly doesn't does it rewind no, let's rewind. Does it fast forward? No, so no function at all with any of that. Right, after just turning the unit around, um, I've gone a bit off piste here. I noticed that this damper is hanging down. So if I hold that, hold that in position, press the eject button now. Do we get any voltage on the motor? Oh, that's interesting. 13.8 volts DC. Um, very smooth DC as well. So we've got some kind of supply. What does it say on the motor? It says 12 volt DC. Oh, that's interesting. It's 
very interesting. So it seems to be getting, sending the voltage out to the motor for the motor to operate, but it's not. I could see that we've got um, a drive belt there and we've got a drive belt here. Um, I want to get in and look at this mechanism. So I want to release this the motor um, and probably put it on a bench power supply and just run the motor to make sure that the motor is operating correctly. And it doesn't run. It's taking 10 milliamps. 0.12 watts. It's drawing a current, very small current, but it's not running. I'm uh, going to going to try and take the motor off. See if there's any way I can get any access to it, or whether I need a new motor. I don't want to divulge its secrets too quickly. Alright, something just fell off of there. What have we got in here? Let's put it onto something we can see it. What cabins have we got in here then? Yeah, it's not so. It's got a lot of carbon. Oh, and a bit of metal. And a washer. When the motor was taken apart, two of these were found inside. Now having a close look at that, where the coil windings are on the rotor here, they connect to three points here on the commutator. And these should be three of these mounted on here. Oop to make an electrical connection to those coils. So there should be three of them. I've only managed to find two of them. But each of them is broken off. And they connect onto... Uh, they connect via these arms here. So pry electrical power into the rotor windings. The stator is a magnet, ring magnet there. So now the next job will be to search the internet to find, try and find some spare parts, get a new motor and install it. 12 volt DC 2400 RPM CCW which looks like it is counterclockwise to so the direction this was an EG 510ED2BA. Couldn't get hold of one of these. Uh, the motor was separate, separate unit here. And then there's this little speed control card on the back of it. The nearest I could find online was um, a 530AD instead of a 510. This one is 12 volt DC as well, 2400 RPM CCW. Um, much, much smaller than the original motor and motor housing. So in fact, it's an equivalent kind of size to the original motor, but the speed controller must be uh, a lot smaller. So the question is, this is the closest I could get. I couldn't get an exact same model as this one. So is it possible to use this motor um, on this chassis. It's now running. Sounds nice and smooth as well. It's really good. Really pleased with that. Right, so it's Reassembly time. OK, 
Okay, this is the ground of the zero volt. To get these around the right way, otherwise the motor won't go in the right direction. Okay, the damper arm is now attached. So I'm going to hold it in an approximate position of where I want to fix it. I've now fixed the damper and ready to plug it in for the first time. Okay, got some power on. See the motor's running. Okay, fast forward, counter's working. like it's no tape in there. Okay, got a good indication on there on a proper, well I'll say proper tape, recorded tape. It's all looking good. Right, I'm going to leave this to play to itself for half an hour just to allow it some time to run through the tape. Uh, just make sure the auto rewind stop feature works. Which it does. It works absolutely lovely. Um, need to do a speed test on it now, a calibration check. 3000 hertz continuous tone, approximately five minutes. That's very slightly slow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the speed of the motor slightly. Right, I've just wound the potentiometer up on the back of the motor, uh, clockwise very slightly so that's it all done